I'm Patrick O'Donnell. Welcome back to the studio for Norman Rockwell Museum. And today we are taking a look at Norman Rockwell's 1942 painting, Aunt Ella Takes a Trip, which was an interior illustration for the magazine Ladies Home Journal. Today we're going to take a look at breaking down the image into its basic shapes. Then once we have our basic shapes and our formula, then we're going to start to render out more organic lines and kind of carve those shapes. And then lastly, we're gonna add tone and shading to make it look as real as we can make it look. This was an interior illustration. We know that because of the composition. The composition, as you can see, is a very long horizontal composition with no vital information to the story in the middle of the painting. So if you look right here down the center of the painting, none of the characters or any of the really important detail exists. That way, when it fold up, it wouldn't get uh, obscured, right? Okay, now I'm looking here at this beautiful, look at all the beautiful light and the atmosphere that Mr. Rockwell created in this, it really comes alive. And what I was looking at here was the horse's face. Again, kind of continuing with our theme of animals here that we like. Um, what I was thinking about is drawing him. Now, he has some particularly interesting features, so this is a little bit tough to see. So I'm just going to take a piece of the detail out and I'm going to put it right here, okay, in the corner of my picture. And this is using reference. Now, what's interesting is Mr. Rockwell used to do this with all of his paintings, but he would have actual photographs and have them thumbtacked onto his drawing, okay? Now, what do I have here? Well, I have my digital pen, but you can use something as simple as a pencil, all right? That's all, it doesn't need to be fancy. So here we go, and remember, when we first start drawing, we're looking for basic shapes and we're drawing lightly. We don't need to draw heavy, okay? So let's come over here to the screen, pick my brush, all right? And as I look, right, I see one big shape, right? That could even be reduced further to a triangle. See that? So what am I going to do? Well, first thing I'm going to do is go a little bit lighter with my pencil. And I'm going to draw a big triangle, okay? Really nice and light, doesn't matter if it's messy, it's okay. Just gives us an idea of where we're going to start. All right, now let's look for another big shape. You'll notice that the neck is as big as the head or takes up almost as much room as the head in this little piece that I've selected. So when I go over here, right, what do we have? Well, we have ourselves another triangle. So, what am I going to do? Well, so the shape, I'm just gonna let it go right over. I'll let it go right over. I have that on a different layer. So, what that means is I'm not actually drawing on it, I'm drawing over it. So, here's that triangle shape. See, nice and big, nothing fancy. Boom, done. All right? Now, what's next? Well, See those ears? That is another triangle. Never realized horses were made so many triangles. And that goes right on the top. Now I'm gonna let this go right off the top of the page. And if your drawing goes off top of the page, don't worry about it, it's okay. All of the great illustrators do it. And what it does is it creates the illusion that the world exists beyond the edge of your paper. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let that go. And then over here, I have another triangle. So I'm just gonna nice and lightly, look at that. It's already starting to look like a horse, right? All right, now it's a little hard to see because of the image, but we're gonna keep going down. And if you notice where the horse's eye would be, there is this big black square. Now, that's okay. Those are uh, blinders, and what they are is to keep the horse from, uh, if I 
understand correctly, to keep the horse from getting distracted or spooked by things it might see in its periphery, uh, meaning the sides of its vision while it's pulling a cart. Okay, so what we're going to do is looking here, notice that if I bring a line over, okay, from there, which is right about here, okay, I'll even leave that line. The square is just a little bit above, right? There's the square, right? And then there's a little bit of a half circle shape where you can see his eye, okay? And then we're gonna go down a little bit further. And right here is just an oval shape, the end of the nose, boom, all right? Then we have his mouth, which is a simple line. Okay. And then we have some other things. We have line up here. Remember, doesn't need to be perfect and the placement doesn't have to be exact because we can move it around. We're drawing lightly. We're not pressing with our pencils. We're holding back, further back here on the pencil so that we don't get deep, dark grooves, right? And then here's another line for the strap that goes around the face. Here's another line, right? Comes down from the blinder. And then it looks like there's a strap here and then a big swooping strap here. All right, and there's a bit it's in its mouth. The bit is actually something that the horse bites down on when you're riding a horse, right? And then you have this long kind of rectangular shape right here, right? So look at that. With a bunch of basic shapes, we've already created the perfect blueprint for our drawing. And the reason we do this is because we want to know where things are going to land or have a general idea. So you see, by drawing lightly, I can start to make observations, right? And bring things out a little bit, move things around, and start to sharpen up some of these shapes. Like for example, right here is a triangle shape, right? Okay. He's a little more, right? His jaw, he's got a little more there. So I'm gonna bring that triangle shape out. Looks like he's got another shape here. And look at that. Alrighty, we're starting to get more of a horse. More of a horse. This one? All right. Pushing, moving, through. all just simple lines. Nice and sketchy, nice and loose. We're not worried about anything. We're not concerned with any of the uh, details. Right now, we're just giving ourselves a roadmap. We want to know where we're going to put the lines that are going to be a little bit nicer and a little more thoughtful, right? And so, this is really all we need to be able to progress to the next step, which is going to be drawing the lines that we want, okay? And the reason we do this is because we want to give ourselves a general idea. We don't want to start drawing something perfectly and then have it be in the wrong location or start to be a little bit off and then have to erase all that work. So by doing this, we make sure that we have already figured out where everything is going to fit generally. We're still gonna change it a lot, but we are gonna make sure that everything fits the way we want. And by drawing lightly, that lets us move things around and change things up a little bit, okay? Okay, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do not be afraid to hit that like button. And if you really enjoy everything at the museum, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you and we'd love to hear from you. 
if you drew along with me. We'd love to see your work. We'd love to share it. So if you want to email it to the museum, you can email it to sketchclub at nrm.org. Or if you post it to Instagram, just hashtag NRM Sketch Club. We'll take a look at the work. Love to hear from you. Thank you again for joining me here in the studio, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot.